Hello everybody and welcome back to Spiritfarer. So today we're going to try and get all the stuff to make the archive room. Archive room B2522. An archive room B2522. What for? I suppose Beverly wants a visual support to tell me a story. She is a gossip queen, so I assume that's what it is. So what do we need for it again? Uh, there we go. Ash plank, linen fabric, and aluminum ingot. Okay, I could do that. Just gotta remember, do I have stuff to make linen? I would assume. Oh yeah. Oh, nope, that's silk. Uh, there we go. There we go. And then... We need aluminum and ash plank. So, if I don't have enough... Wait. Shut up, cow. Where is my thing? There it is. Oh, I do have ash log. I just have everything. Oh, yeah. Oh! This minigame scared me. Good. Go. Oh. Alright, there we go. Alright, thank you, thank you, thank you. Give me. Okay, and then... We need two aluminum ingot. Can I make those right now as well? Oh no, pulsar ingots. Ah. There we go. Oh, perfection. Alright, now. We have enough. Boing. Whoa. So, we're going to... Where should we put this? Where would it fit? Oh, we could put it right there. There we go. Squish it in there. Perfect. Let's check it out before she wakes up. I want to see it. Oh, it's so cute! It's like a little projector room. Project. Oh, I have nothing. <laughs> Alright, I, I suppose Beverly will teach us how to do that in the morning. So for now, uh, let's... We'll have to wait till then. I'm gonna work on... watering the plant while I wait. I always forget to do this. You know, I'm wondering if there's gonna be some new ship upgrades. We got an opal from her, and we need opals for shrines, and I assume we'll get a flower from her, so I wonder if they're planning to make more ship upgrades. Maybe we should go check and see if there are any right now. What the hell? That was like 50 cows mooing at once. Alright, there you go. Oh god, it happened again. Run! Demon cow! Oh, oh! I once had a friend who cut his own toe. He had a new one made of rubber. He was called Roberto. Oh, get it? 
<laughs> Very funny. Uh, no, it doesn't look like there's anything new just yet. Hmm, but maybe. Maybe they will add something new. That's my favorite thing about indie games. Or like, early access games. I know they get a lot of flack, but I think it's cool that the devs can come back and add something on later. Even on like console now. I think that's super cool because it means you can get something new out of the game even if it's years old. That's why I'm excited for the new spirits. It just seems like a cool thing to have in a game, especially if you love a game a lot, but you run out of content from it because you play it so much, and then you have a brand new thing to do. It's always a lot of fun. Oh! She's awake! Not bad! This looks great. This reminds me of my late husband David's classroom. Obviously, you've never met him, but you knew he was a high school teacher. You already knew that. The room. It's just very similar. You should go inside and take a peek. Maybe see if the projector still works. Oh, it does. I looked. Oh, okay. Uh, project. Yes, it does. Oh! Nothing to show. You could try this. It was my husband's work things. Maybe it will work. Alright, math 116 lecture notes. Oh, I hate math. Alright. Oh, wow! David was a math teacher. He taught at Chelsea High for 20 years. We met on a blind date. A new bachelor is snatched up quickly in a small town. My friend Pauline matched us up. She was the school secretary. That was That school would have been in shambles without her. She was the first to see him and called me the second he was out of her sight. Bev, I just met the love of your life. How about that? She was right, to a point. I was the love of his life. He was gone too quickly to be the love of mine. I've never met anyone as special as him. He had a warmth that I was never able to find again. Well, what are we looking at? It must be a formula or something. I've never been that great at math. Me neither, Bev. My brain gets confused with the numbers. I have that in common with... Hmm. She told me that she isn't great with... I'm just tired. I can feel it in my bones. Don't ever get old, Stella. It wouldn't suit you. Aw. Can I leave the projector now? I don't know how to turn it off. Hello? Where'd she go? There's nothing here, so I'm guessing she wants some time to herself. Why aren't you in your room? Sweet pea! I could go for a snack. Oh, okay. Fine. Whatever. I just want to come in and make sure you're okay. Would you like some mock gruel? Probably not. Would you like some bread? Okay. She had a whole loaf of bread. And that tiny little owl body. I wonder if Bev is having memory problems like Alice did. I hope that's not the case, because Alice is moving on, is the one that hurt me the most. <laughs> Maybe she's just, had, uh, like, feeling some bad memories and isn't sure how exactly to voice them with us, since she remembers us as the little neighbor. Yeah. She's, you know, she's just having trouble dealing with all of the emotions she's feeling. And sometimes people just need time to chill and process everything on their own before they can talk about it. Or they don't want to talk about it, and that's okay too. Girl, you are such a pretty turtle. You are gonna have gold on your back. There you go. Was that gold? Did I put it in? No, I did not. There we go. Descend. Hell yeah. Oh, I barely saw that. What's up, Bev? 
Why did I put you up so high? You're the only one here other than the other dude. Hey. I'm coming. I'm here. Sweet pea. I do enjoy being on this boat. I've been wondering, would it be possible to build me a house? You remember, the kids and David and I lived on a farm. Oh no, I Bev, I built you a house. It's right there. We had nature all around. We had dogs and goats. It was a cozy little farmhouse. It wasn't much, but it was ours. What am I saying? You've already done that for me. I was just testing you to see if you're quick on your feet. As I can see, you're still sharp. Which reminds me that I need to get my kitchen knife sharpened. That's just something my childhood friend Daryl didn't do. He was cutting vegetables one day and just like that, the blade bent, broke, and shattered all over the place. Mostly in his face. He had bandages on his face from all the small cuts. His wife, Hannah, left him. <laughs> Not because of the cuts, but because he had a secret family two towns over. Oh, okay. <laughs> that just goes to show you can't trust a man who doesn't sharpen his knives. Well, I'll... Uh... I guess I'll go home. Oh, no. I think that is what's happening. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not good at all. Oh, no. And she's trying to hide it, but it seems like it's really bothering her. I don't like it. I need a hug. I need a hug. Give me a hug. Oh no, she's back again. Bev, honey, you're really f making me worry, girl. Stella, this is quite the vessel. At this point, it's essentially a sailing village, a real community. Do you remember Dana? The flower girl with the beautiful long red hair. You know, Dana. She went to the desert with some friends. They all followed this man with a long robe and silky hair around. They called him Jimmy Jim, which always sounded odd to me. Was Jimmy a diminutive of James? Was Jim his last name? Don't mind the boat, it's fine. <laughs> it just didn't really roll off the tongue. You'd think a cult leader would be better at coming up with names. Oh my god, Bev. Dana kept telling me they were looking for some kind of new water. That the water in the cities was too tainted, full of city sweat and bad omens. That they needed to find a better, cleaner source of water in the desert. She kept wanting me to come with them, telling me this new water would heal everything. That their new community would be beautiful. Everyone in harmony with each other and with nature. Well, it didn't take very long for everyone to be dehydrated. The well they dug lasted a few weeks and everyone started fighting over the water. I guess I'm just saying that I know you're busy. You've got things to tend to. People to see. Places to be. I don't want to be a bother. But I'll just have to be. I've been thinking about a way to repay you for all that running around. I think I've got a pretty good idea, but I need your help for the final touch. I was talking to one of the people on this boat. I'm so bad with names. Well, new names. I can't seem to remember your passengers. It must be all the comings and goings. Well, they were all saying some- they were saying sometimes the boat goes through a swarm of fireflies. Their bellies are sometimes filled with fire glow seeds. Well, look at that. You've already got some fire glow. No need for all that trouble then. Some beautiful, perfectly spicy fire glow. Oh, what the heck. I can't keep it a secret for much longer. Do you remember when you first moved into the building? I had been there for years. I sold the house a few months after David died. The kids were heartbroken at first. They were never there. They just wanted their old rooms to stay perfectly intact, I suppose. Well, back to you. Your fridge broke on the first day. Poor thing. I could tell you were broke and couldn't afford takeout. Do you remember what happened? No, tell me. That's too bad. I made you soup. Not just any soup. My favorite soup in the whole wide world. It was laksa. It was the first thing I ate when I moved to the big city alone. I had moved here to be closer to my sister. It was quite the trip. It took a few days. And well, when I got here, my neighbor, Arnia, Arn, 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 Ar, Aranya, Aranya, from 32B invited me to dinner. Neighbors were friendlier back then. She deserved laksa. I'd never tried it before, but I instantly fell in love. For a year straight, I must have invited myself to dinner at least once a week. Hopefully, I didn't overstay my welcome. Her family was so nice. In any case, spicy food became my ultimate friendship test. If you could stomach it, stomach it, then you can stomach me. And you passed with flying colors. I couldn't help you with your fridge, but I could keep you fed. 
My gift to you is Aranya's family recipe. I can't recreate it anymore. Well, that's not true. I just believe that at my age, I've done enough cooking for a lifetime. It's time to let someone else take the reins. If you cook Alexa, maybe we can share it. You have to put fire glow and... Hmm. Fire glow and that delicious powder of grain. Sorry about that. Must have slipped my mind. You'll have to figure it out, I suppose. If I had Laxa in front of me, I would remember. Wouldn't that be lovely? Oh yeah. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Give me a hug. I want to give you a big hug. Hmm. <laughs> we both needed that. Yes, we did. <laughs> it's been a tough day for both of us. Alright, uh, but we'll make some Laxa next time. I'm really worried <laughs> about Bev, but she seems to be- oh. She seems to be more aware of what's happening to her than Alice was. Or at least I think that's what was what's going on. Or maybe she's just struggling with bad memory. Either way, it's worrying me. So I hope we can make her feel better with some Laksa. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourselves and have a good day.